Hi, welcome to the Gear Garage. I'm with Zach. This is my little internet show about whitewater things. And today we'll talk about two point self equalizing anchors again. I've done episodes on this before. I just think it's a really important skill for us to practice as boating season starts. And it's important, even if you haven't taken a rescue class, if you're the one on your boat, whether you're rowing or you're a paddle boat, captaining, whatever, if you don't have safety classes or experience, I feel like this is the one thing you should definitely know how to do. If you're the one that gets stuck on a rock and somebody throws you a safety line, you can you can clip it to the D-ring, but if it's just on one D-ring, that D-ring has a lot of stress and can pop. And so I feel like everybody should be able to tie to two D-rings with a self-equalizing anchor. So I've done videos on this before. I'm going to go through this really quickly. You basically just loop some one-inch tubular webbing, uh, which is my favorite type of thing to use for an anchor. This is stuff you can get on... Amazon or whatever. It's just it's pretty strong stuff and easy to work with. There's other stuff you can use as well. And tie the water knot. And the water knot's one of the basic river knots I think everybody should know. It's just an overhand knot on one side and then just a reverse follow through. This is not a hard knot to learn and remember. But it takes some practice. You can't just do it once or twice on a weekend and remember it four years later. And so that's why it's good to practice right now. And when you tie the water knot, it just looks it looks beautiful, make it look pretty, and also make sure there's like about a fist length or longer of tail. That's really important. And once you have that, you have this system that you can clip into. And when we one important thing about the system, and I like a lot of webbing, the shorter this, the smaller this angle is, the less force on these. And a good rule of thumb is the rule of 120. If this angle is 120, whereas like it's shorter, so it's down here. The, it's, the force spread between them is the same as just pulling on one. I'm not sure if that makes sense, but basically at angles larger than 120, you're making the system worse. At angles smaller than 120, you're putting less stress on the D-ring than just, just a throw bag by itself. So when what we teach is you take one of these and twist it. And what I want to do in this video is show why you twist it. And the reason you twist it is if a D-ring breaks, then the system falls apart without the twist. So to demonstrate a D-ring breaking, I'm going to replace D-rings with carabiners. So we're going to do this with carabiners so we can demonstrate a D-ring breaking. Again, run the webbing through the system, tire water knot, which, you know, you should, it's good to practice the water knot a lot so it's second nature. When you do have a problem out there, your hands are cold, you know, things are stressful, people are watching you, you get nervous, you get shaky because you get nervous. So being able to do the water knot easily, I think is really important instead of having to think about it. So if you take this system and you attach whatever you want to attach, a pulley or just like a D-ring, if you attach something to the system like this, and let's say a D-ring pops, you can see it's all attached. If this D-ring was to pop, And this would flow through the system oops, and come off. So again, if a D-ring would pop, it, now the D-ring, if it pop, might get stuck in the carabiner, but this is all you know, free once it pops. So what we do to counteract that is add a twist to one of the loops. So again, if you have your system here and you simply just take one of these and twist it over. So again, they're together, one twist, then put your whatever you're going to put on it. Um, this typically is just a carabiner with a throw bag. But it looks like this. It's a nice low angle, so there's, there's, we're definitely beating the rule of 120. Then if a D ring pops and this whole system goes through, it binds like that. And so that's the reason we do the twist. The same thing occurs if you're going to do a three point. We've talked about three point self equalizing anchors. One, two, three, which you need a lot of webbing for. Uh, you need to put the twist in that as well, and that one will bind if it comes undone. So that's it for two point self equalizing anchors uh, with the twist and, and a popping D-ring. If you have questions about this, as always, add questions in the question section below. If you have experience with this, especially real world experience with a D-ring popping, I love to hear about it. I've seen a few D-rings pop, and so when I'm on a safety scene, I'm super self-conscious of that happening. And so, especially with older boats, I'll always do a two to three uh, point system. This is my brand new air. 
I mean, this is a beautiful boat. I'm going to do a review on it here pretty soon. I just got it, just put it together yesterday. These D rings are built into the fabric. They're incredibly strong. You can actually get away with quite a bit of pulling on a brand new D ring, surprising amount, but it's always good practice that when you're pulling with more than just a throw bag to do at least two, attached to at least two D rings. So that's it. As always, leave comments. If you like this episode, hit it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And yeah, see you in the next episode. Thanks.